so much for that warm introduction. How's everybody doing? All right, all right. We have quite a bit of people coming into the room. Uh, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, we have a great program uh, lined up for you. Um, and uh, wanted to see if Milan is ready. Milan. I am. Are you able to hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Perfect. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Um, so how's the day going? My day is going very well. One, I want to say I'm delighted to be here, and I'm excited to have this conversation about the business of art. You know, there are so many different things and influences that brought me here today. Um, so you all are in for a treat. One, because I'm going to talk about the steps needed or the tools needed to transition into entrepreneurship as a young artist. I'm going to talk about some things to consider when you're investing in art. And I'm going to also mention mental health and art therapy. Okay, but first, let me tell you a little bit about myself and the Balan collection and some influences that led me to where I am today. Balan, before before we uh, go into that, just give me one second. I gotta okay. make sure. I gotta make sure. As I spoke to you earlier about, gotta have my wine ready. Um, everybody, okay. grab their wine. Um, well, I'm ready. Today, um, one of my favorite wines I'm trying is the 19 Crimes. Right, you know, the good little wine. Um, not too strong, not too light, right in the middle. So everybody just pour it, pour your wine, you know. Uh, we gotta get ready for this session. Uh, it is a networking session. Uh, you know, we wanna sort of unwind, uh, have people relax, learn about some art. Uh, I am actually right now in downtown Houston at uh, my office, uh, my new office, and, uh, and uh, getting ready to uh, have a very productive week next week. But, before then, um, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I'm excited. Um, now that everybody got their wine together, uh, I guess we could start the conversation. So uh, how this is going to go, we're going to spend about 20 minutes um, to just kind of talk about um, some, some work that Bilal is doing, to so introduce her, and then go into uh, a live painting session, uh, and then go into showcasing some of her uh, painting at a, at a gallery. Uh, it, this is a hybrid event. You know, this, a portion of it is virtual, is um, live, right? And so, uh, I'm going to let you introduce uh, yourself, uh, as I do have your resume here, but uh, it, uh, I wanted to give you the opportunity uh, to introduce uh, yourself to our membership. And again, we're very excited to hear from you. Right. So I'm live from Raleigh, North Carolina. And like I mentioned, there are so many different things that have impacted my professional, um, um, academic, and my, my creative path that led me to where I am today. Um, and that journey began in Memphis, Tennessee, with the, with the love, the care, and protection of the matriarch in my family. So my Aunt Curtis, my mother Cheryl, and my grandmother Marilyn really um, created a pact and instilled the importance of academic rigor, authenticity, and ultimately living life by design, which is my motto for my collection. And living life by design is simply having a purpose, making an impact and taking control of your own narrative. And ironically, those are simply the tools that I use to transition into entrepreneurship and begin the Belong Collection. Right now, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I, um, my professional career uh, launched in New York um, in financial services. So I also work at Bloomberg um, and I do things in that area. I do some consulting, but ultimately when people ask, who are you? I say, I'm an artist and I'm a creative. So that's who I am. Amazing, 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 amazing. So, so walk me through the line. Um, uh, how, by the way, I just want to pivot for a little bit. So the business of series is a series that uh, the National Black NBA, um, uh, national wise, has 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 had many ch chapters participate in. Um, this is a series where we try to uh, identify areas of opportunity, uh, educate folks about different industries. Um, we have uh, the business of sports um, that is our, our, one of our key events in our chapter. Then we have the business of medicine event that's that, that we're putting together. Uh, and then now we have the business of art event that happens throughout the year, but this is, of course, a special uh, uh, event. So, Ron, back to you. Uh, so tell me about uh, 
the ev your evolution in art in terms of what sparked you to get started, you know? Um, because many of us uh, think we're artistic in, in terms of, uh, you know, creative, right? But uh, we, we, we sort of maybe don't know how to start or have, haven't had a life trigger event to get us started. So what was that like? Hey, listen, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, every artist process is different. And I think it's great that we're talking about having this conversation about art right now and how I got started. So throughout life, we all experience growth, change, happiness, um, sadness, and sometimes loss. The loss of the most important people in my life uh, ignited a fire in me and, and allowed me to kind of think about ways to be creative and take that emotion and create something that I can't say in words and put it on a canvas. So I didn't have a formal background in art, but I knew that there was something that I needed to unleash my creative juices and just really go out there and, and take risks, honestly. And, and I saw that there was some talent there. And, you know, in the beginning, I didn't think of it as me being an entrepreneur or taking that leap into the business world. It was simply me wanting to create. And then after a while, I realized, you know, socializing my art, talking to local businesses about what I wanted to do and my focus for the Belong Collection allowed me to start collaborating with other people that had ideas in the city about how we can get more people involved. So it's really mm -hmm. about networking. Networking is the number one thing. Once you find that you have the creative juice, start socializing your work and talking about what you do. You don't have to wait until you have 10 pieces or you feel like you've made it or you're at your peak, you can start socializing your work right now. So that's exactly what I would tell someone that's thinking about um, becoming an artist or a young artist that hasn't really got out there and, and socialized their work to galleries or local businesses. Wow. So, so in a sense, um, your art was almost like a, a, a art therapy sort of sort of uh, uh event for you right um where it helped you get to a better ment mental health state um and so so i kind of wanted you to talk about how important that is especially during uh uh pandemic where we you know m many people seeing their wealth deplete uh, many people are, are losing loved ones um right. talk to us about you know how art there you know, the, the, actually the idea of art therapy and how it relates to mental health Right. Um, once again, um, mental health impacts all communities, you know, and, and art therapy unleashes um, something inside of you emotionally to allow you to kind of release anxiety, not feel overwhelmed. Think about when you go to a therapist. A therapist is not magic. You're able to release the information and the things that you're feeling to someone else. Think of that canvas as someone else or a reflection of you, where you're able to take the paint and you're able to make decisions about how you're going to curate something that you can't say in words. So I think Henry Matisse said um, in a quote before, he said, if you can say it in words, then why paint? So it's all about unleashing those emotions and putting it on the canvas. Um, and if we want to just talk about our community, the African-American community is 13.4% of the U.S. population. 16% of our community report mental health conditions every year. And it's growing by 3%. That's about 7 million people, right. you know? And what we want to do is challenge status quo. We don't want to talk about traditional medicine and things like that. We want to take art therapy and things that are unconventional and, and heal our communities with those things because they work. Right. Wow, awesome, awesome. So, you know, art creates a, a sort of sense of experience that is like no other, right? Um, and so merging that into uh, an avenue where it could help one um, get past hard times is uh, something that, uh, um, you know, is, is one of those those um, critical aspects of art that uh, you know, not a lot of things could, not a lot of actions could um, sort of zoo. Um, so now we we move on to the actual business piece of art right many of our many you know um, that have the mean uh, means and uh, that are interested in art 
don't necessarily know where to start. Um, you know, I was one of those, those people, right? Um, and I was fortunate that uh, a friend of mine's uh, opened up an art gallery, um, and I was able to showcase some of his uh, work at the professional mixture that we do in New York City. And that was that opened my mind completely to the world of art. And how do one get into that that business? How does one understand the valuation? How does one understand how auction houses inter interact with um, value art? How does how does one identify that next artist? You know, talk to us about that. Right. Well, first let me say the the art market or the global art market is so large that everybody can put their hands in the pot i think right, right now right. the global art market is valued at about 64.3 billion and i think last year I, I there were about right there. What right there. 61 you said 64.3 billion oh wow okay and i think last year there were about 40 million um transactions that we know of because once again there are transactions being made in the art market that are not captured in the auction houses right okay so everybody can put their hands in the pie so if you are interested in investing in art or, or being a part of the auction process you definitely can do that um but to answer your question you know how do we get involved how do we do our due diligence so we can know that we're making the right choice where there are um, art or auction houses or benchmark or organizations that are in place that allows you to evaluate art. So those are the top three, I would say, is um, Christie's, Phillips, and Sotheby's. Those are the top three auction houses. And how they do it is they look at your previous auction results mm -hmm. and they can value your art based on the, the medium that you've used in your previous sales um, in, in revenue for the previous year. So, so somebody new coming into the industry, um, is there an agent or, or some, how do they get their art to that next level? Right. Is so, this somebody put that person in? I thought about how I would um, frame this or make a parallel for you guys, but there are art dealers out there. And what the art dealers are are intermediaries that represent you and your art. But what you have to do is do your due diligence to find the galleries and the dealers that are going to align with your values and your art to make sure there's a good marriage there. And I know a lot of people that are on this live have a business background or development background. So if you have a development background, you know, if you are a nonprofit and you're looking for funding, you have to find donors that match and sync with your values. That's the same thing with mm -hmm. art. So you really have to do your due diligence. I would say some of the top places to go is artdealer.org or mm -hmm. artcollectors.com. And then also another thing, just to kind of see who's out there, what um, what are some trending art, go to artnet.com. Because I use artnet a lot um, just to kind of see what art is trending right now or what was trending last year to get some ideas. Okay, so so ladies and gentlemen, artnet.com, artnet.com. Artnet, and then artdealers.org um, is another art, thing. Artdealers.org, ladies and gentlemen, artdealers.org. So what uh, okay. Art Dealers also allows you to see is what galleries are a part of that organization. Okay. So it allows you to verify galleries and then do your due diligence on the galleries to see if they align with your the vision of your collection or your artwork. Okay. And and we see, is there a, so you know, uh, one of the things that I uh, wanted to discuss is the the types of art form, right? Um, is there one more valuable than the other or is this based on whoever's willing to pay the price, right? There's definitely not one more valuable than the other. So you have cubism, you have abstract minimalism, and then you have realism, surrealism. Right. Um, so you have different um, genres and mediums of art that's out there, and you can't value the art based on the type of art it is. It's all about the viewer. It's right. all about the audience and what they see in the art. Um, one of my favorite um, artists is Frank Stella. And 
he started painting abstract minimalism and then he matriculated to sculpting. Mm -hmm. So he, he refined something and he saw that over time, you can be an expert in one area and then you can expand out. And one of his favorite sayings is the art is beyond the canvas. Do not feel like an artist or art is confined to the canvas. And that's something that I live by too. You know, I love abstract painting. I love using acrylic, um, but I often see my thing, myself looking at other, you know, artists and trying to figure out what else can I do? What, what other risk can I take mm -hmm. as an artist? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I actually just did is I, um, I created a vase that mirrors the painting that you see behind me in the pearl collection. So you can okay. kind of see this vase here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is me really taking a risk because I'm a, you know, I, I'm an abstract painter on canvas, but I mm -hmm. wanted to start doing something that, you know, I know that my audience loves. So everyone loves the pearl collection, but let me see if I can do an everyday piece for everyone. So I, I started to design bases. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so merging in, uh, the art, the you know paintings with the actual furniture as well as a uh, uh, combined um, statement or a combined experience, uh, what have you. Right. This oh, is another one here. All right. <laughs> all right. Beautiful. So, so are, are you getting into the, the the furniture design space still with your artwork? Actually, and I think me and you we talked about this right. Um, right. in the past about you know social issues um, that. Yes. We that I may see in the art space. And I was speaking with um, one of the local florists here. And she was telling me that, you know, she's a florist and, you know, she was a part of a process or she knew of a process at an art museum where um, florists would go in and curate arrangements based on the art that they see. Mm -hmm. And she was mm -hmm. literally the only black woman that was accepted into that program. And because of COVID, she was not able um, to participate right now, but I'm sure she will very soon. You saw her flowers, so that she's going to participate. Oh, but she's there. She's here. Oh, the bring her to the camera. Bring her to the camera. Let me bring bring her. Her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. right. so this is Shannon. How are, How are you? How are you? Real quick, just introduce yourself to our guest. I, I heard so much about you, so you know, real quick, I wanted the guest to hear as well. Thank you. So I'm Shannon. I am the owner of Elan House, and I created these beautiful arrangements for Belan here. She's such a sweetheart. I love her artwork. But I created these arrangements just going off of the colors of her work and just her abstract art. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it just came together in the last hour right before this event. <laughs> wow. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we, you never know who's going to jump into the conversation. Um, you know, we have a power <laughs> team over there. Um, so excited to hear from you. Thank you so much. You're Amazing. welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And once again, it's about, you know, once again, networking and empowerment. And Shannon told me her story and I immediately um, wanted to collaborate with her. So I knew I was making these um, custom bases. And I said, you know what? I have this event. Let's collaborate and do something together. Absolutely. And uh, I want to remind folks, the event that you're talking about is the Black and Bloom, correct? Right. So there's an event here in North Carolina called Art and Bloom. Mm -hmm. And Shannon mentioned that because of the shortage of African-American florists there, what about having something called Black and Bloom? She would get together Black florists that she knew in the community and I would bring in artists and we would have that marriage of the black and bloom for us because we were underrepresented in that process. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2021, uh, are we going to see that event again? Or hopefully, hope, hopefully, and hopefully uh, National Black NBA is going to be a sponsor. <laughs> All right. You know, when you hear that. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm going to be on the spot. <laughs> Certainly, would love to come down there and check you ladies out. Uh, hopefully, you know the pandemic uh, subsides by then, but we'll see. Uh, and typically, it's around the summer. 
Yeah, so the art event they have here is typically held in March, and it starts on a Thursday and it goes through Saturday. And so what normally happens is um, the artist, the florist will go in probably around January and you just pick your piece of art out of a drawing. So you don't know what piece of art you will be recreating based with your uh, flowers. And then from there, you have about two months to prepare, order your flowers, get everything together. And then it typically runs Thursday through Saturday. And I think the year, what year, 2020? In 2019, they had about maybe 30,000 guests come in over that time frame. And I've been going to that event for the last two years, and I never saw any black floors. Wow. Feature. Wow. And I was so in awe and I was just like, OK, I'm going to throw my name in the hat. And I mean, it was older, you know, Caucasian florists who had shops and I was the only black person sitting in the room that day. Wow. And yeah. so, yeah. And then it got canceled due to COVID. So they just sent out an email about it actually this week with a survey asking when would participants like to have the 2021 event? which was really interesting because like we said, we talked about black and bloom and I'm like, I think that could really be something big here. Right. And just mm -hmm. nationally. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what is the, do you have, do you have a website for this event so that we can let the audience know? Um, not at the moment, but we'll let, we'll definitely share the information with you mm -hmm. once everything is launched. And I will keep you guys abreast to as we're rolling things out as well. Perfect, perfect. Uh, I wanted to go back to um, your entrepreneurial journey, right? Uh, right. And becoming uh, not only the, uh, the 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 artist, but also the businesswoman, right? Um, right. So, you know, for those that are, are interested in this space, right? Um, what sort of nuggets can you give them for them to seek the right investment you know investment is always a risk in whatever industry right but for them to ensure that they have a return on their investment of time investment of uh, funds into this art world what sort of nuggets can you give in that regard right no being an artist and, and curating a piece can take a lot of time mm -hmm. i would say something that i wish someone told me um when i started out as an artist is you know yeah, your art is your baby, but be flexible on letting certain pieces go and also be flexible on curating custom pieces. And that's something that I do now. And that's where I get the bulk of my my revenue is curating custom pieces, having conversations with large institutions like churches um, and businesses and, um, and financial institutions about my art and how it can be placed and doing custom pieces. So even though these pieces you see may be gorgeous and you love them, um, a lot of people want the art to be connected to them in some type of way. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely think about um, being able to improvise and customize pieces for your audience, even mm -hmm. though these are your babies and you love them. And, and I'm, here taking, I'm here taking some notes, so we are with yeah. me. <laughs> improvise. Got it. So, so that's one thing. Um, and another thing, and I think I mentioned this before, is, you know, be confident and forceful about, you know, socializing your art. Another thing I would tell a young artist is don't undervalue your work. You know what your work means. You know the blood, sweat, and tears you put into your work. So, you know, you understand the valuation, so do not undervalue your work. And then yeah, those are the top three things that I would suggest um, people or young artists should consider when they're on the road of entrepreneurship. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, Balan Stribling. Balan Stribling. Balan Stribling. Amazing, amazing, amazing. It's not over yet, but I just wanted to give you flowers right now. Thank you. Right now. Um, all right. So uh, we're going to transition, if you're ready, Balan, um, to a live pinning session. So you could actually, people could actually see some of the process. I know it probably takes you hours upon hours, and I'm, and I'm putting a little bit of pressure on you. I'm putting you are. But if, if you're comfortable, um, would you be able to? Uh, 
do a live uh, piece for us? So I will do a live piece. I'm going to do something um, similar to the Pearl series that you see here, because it's one of my uh, more simpler pieces. Mm -hmm. So the Pearl series, um, and we're going to have a blank canvas come up, and I'm going to scoop my chair a bit so I can bring it up close so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. <coughs> So just give me one moment. All right, we're gonna take that moment. We're gonna use that. Um, yeah, let's go and just get your second round. Okay. You know, <laughs> and I'll you let know, you guys know. look at a painting while while I'm taking my time. All right, so we, we're gonna let Belani get set up, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Norville. Um, thank you again for uh, uh, a amazing EAS session. Um, wanted to make sure that I publicly state that. Um, we are very excited about the National Black MBA Metro New York Chapter 2021 initiatives. Uh, 2020 been a challenging year, but folks, you can see we've been very busy. All right, we didn't let the pandemic hold us back, um, and we brought the information to our people, to our members, and this is what we do. Um, at this time, you know, I'm going to put some music on, relax. Let, let's uh, let's ease into the next session, okay? So I wanted to, I wanted to jump in. I wanted to jump in, uh, fresh out the press, fresh out the press. We will be offering uh, Balan Stribling's uh, artwork on our website. Uh, just got the confirmation uh, just now. So wanted to, you guys to uh, know right away. Um, and so be on the lookout uh, for Balan's artwork right on our website. Uh, additionally, we are live on Facebook right now, um, and so just want to let let everybody know that. Okay, folks. All right. So uh, as we continue to uh, wait for uh, Balan, everybody uh, is. Oh, you you ready? 
Okay. So the lifestyle um, in our chapter is uh, something that we are very passionate about. Um, uh, not only do we work hard, but we, we network hard as well. Um, and so we have had a uh, dedication to the pillar winning of uh, the uh, lifestyle chapter of the year um, about two years ago, if my memory serves me right. Um, and so from there, we've done uh, many events that brought folks together and brought sponsorship sponsor opportunity for our corporate sponsors, um, ranging from, of course, the Upmixer series of events that brings uh, many professional organizations together, brother sister organizations. Uh, then we have our Black Thai Gala that where we honor um, community members or, or people or, or, or partner partners or, or, or um, uh, uh, sponsors um, uh, that have been shown a very strong effort to help us um, push uh, the uh, initiatives that we have for the community. Uh, and then we have you know boating events, uh, we have golf events, of course. Um, many opportunities for folks in various different levels of their careers to network, whether it's whether whether that whether that's candidates networking with uh, potential recruiters or um, uh, 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 you know folks uh, in different industries networking to uh, try to find opportunities um, and, uh, and and go from there. So uh, we are very honored and uh, and um, appreciative of this pillar. And at this point, uh, let me stop talking and. Uh, Move on to uh, move on to Balan. Balan, you have the mic. Okay, guys. So as an artist, um, once again, I've learned throughout time um, different styles and different modes and techniques. Right now, what I'm doing is basing my painting, and I actually learned layering process um, or layering acrylic on the canvas when I went to New Orleans and I started to talk to local artists, and they told me the techniques that they used. Um, with acrylic paint and that was a few years ago and ever since then in some of my latest pieces you'll see layering and texture so one other thing that i like to use on um my my color palette and my canvas is molding paste to give my canvas texture and i also base it with the color and then i go back over it you'll start to see um notes of silver and um and, and gold pigments in my paint as well so right now I'm just basing. So George, you can continue to talk as I base the paint if you like. <laughs> I definitely wanted the folks to get uh, the full experience uh, in terms of some of the techniques uh, that you're using in your artwork. So, um, you know, folks, again, uh, we at the Natural New York chapter of National Black MBA, uh, we try to um, touch many different industries uh, in, for, in in terms of uh, getting folks to understand uh, how to get to that next level, how to get to that sweet C-suite position. Uh, and then, of course, we have a strong focus, uh, obviously, um, especially this week, on entrepreneurism. Uh, we believe that entrepreneurism is a vital uh, piece into, in terms of creating generational wealth for our community. Uh, and as an entrepreneur myself, I, I, I you know, pride myself on having certain products and tools uh, that help support those efforts. And so um, just a little commercial about myself. Uh, I own a, a insurance and risk management organization with headquarters in, uh, in New York City, um, Harlem to be Pacific, and uh, you know, regional office or down here in Houston, Texas. Uh, we specialize in small to mid-sized uh, businesses. Uh, we work a lot with MWBEs that, that are securing the city and municipal contracts. We as well as are, are, are in that process of securing uh, some municipal uh, contracts with our, with our with our agency. So, Balan, uh, so you have a mixture of paints, right? I do. So I have um, a cadet blue, a mm -hmm. royal blue, and I add a little white as well. And then what I'm going to also add, which is not on my paint palette right now, is silver. So I use silver to it kind of um, brings out my paint. So it gives you a deeper kind of like ocean feel of the painting. So if you've seen the original Pearl, uh, the Pearl series blue, you, yeah. it looks like you're almost looking at the ocean or the deep blue sea. So that's the feel that I wanna give you. But right now I'm just basing the painting or but, the canvas. So talk to me how you, you come up with, you know, there's, there's various colors in the spectrum, right? 
how do you come up with one color versus the other? Is it the particular mood that gets you that? Is it like a, a, a idea or is it like, you know, some sort of inspiration to say, well, you know what, blues the day, what's blue today? Yeah, I think I'm drawn to blue for my emotional appeal. So with the Pearl series, it is about emotion and back and uh, backbone. So mm -hmm. when I think blue, I think of happiness, deep thought, um, ocean, serene. Um, and that's why I use blue um, as the base of many of my paintings. There are paintings in my collection that are not based with blue, like the Venetian of Life. Um, it has more of a pinkish peachy base, but most of my paintings are based in blue because of the, the emotional appeal for okay. Um, okay. So right now I'm basing, and what I'm gonna do now is put some more texture on there. So right now it just looks like it's a stiff canvas. You're like, what is she doing? What is this, this background? But it's no. gonna come together, you'll see in a minute. No, absolutely, absolutely. I, you know, I'm sure our members are, are taking notes and um, listening to the discussion and uh, trying to sort of uh, uh, bring out their uh, artist, artistic. One of, the uh, things, one of the things I want to note in the Pearl series is mm -hmm. that if you look at my Pearl collection, no Pearl is shaped the same way. So you see the string of Pearls, they're all designed differently. Because it's yeah. backbone, it represents human, and we're all unique, and we're not mm -hmm. designed the same way. The emotions are different. The colors on the backdrop is different. The texture is different, but the the pearls are also different as well. Now, do you actually recreate this piece if somebody says, "Hey, listen, I love this piece so much that I want original one"? Do you actually would you actually recreate this piece? I'll recreate the pearl series, but mm -hmm. once again, the pearls, the per the string of pearls are shaped differently in every piece. And I'll give you an example. My mm -hmm. uh, my pastor here in North Carolina, he was actually here for this event. I curated four pieces for him in the pearl series, but I combined them as one. And I named it Four Cor Corners of the World to represent the four angels in each corner of the world. And the whole piece was kind of like going around in the circle. Like if you put the four pieces together, it looked like the world with four angels at the corner. But really, it was the Pearl series. Excellent, excellent. So um, I know we didn't get a we, we're not we didn't get a tour of the area yet. I'm sure we could get it afterwards. Uh, but who's in the room? So we have um, just a few people in the room. A few trickled out. So I have. Um, some of my close friends and family here. My um, one of my Excellent. friends, Tiffany, is here, and my Excellent. friend Camry. And what Tiffany is going to do as I base the painting, she's going to take you guys around the room so you can actually see some of the pieces that are out there. Oh, this is this is great. So, Tiffany. Yes. Hello. Yes. This is an amazing pleasure to meet you. Um, <laughs> interesting way of meeting <laughs> right pleasure to virtually meet you um so so is do you have the names of these pieces um as folks um get as folks get ready to potentially purchase on our website um you wouldn't have the names of these pieces would you sure we can definitely give you all the names of the pieces we'll start with this one here that we're looking at so our curator is going to give, <laughs> give you a little detail yeah, about this one. Yeah, so this piece right here, this one's called Prominence in the Wild. It is Prominence in the Wild. Prominence in the Wild. So right, in the size of it. So this one right here is a 36 by 48 canvas. OK. And then, um, I mean, talk about pricing on the website. But oh, yeah, the pricing. Did you enter this one? Yeah, and then this one right here, this is Storm. This is actually one of my personal favorites here. Um, this is a more recent piece for Belon. Um, I don't know. I, let me ask you, what do you see when you look at this thing? Not me. It's the, and, and this is what, one of the most exciting things about art, right? Everybody, yeah. everybody sees something different. Uh, as, for, as for myself, you guys might think I'm crazy, but I actually see a a bird or a duck um, <laughs> it, it's weird but I, you know the beak is 
is is the blue on the on the bottom right there. That that could, that could be the beak, and then you have the eye. Of course, that white mm -hmm. dot. Um, you know, I see a very colorful bird, some sort of bird duck situation. Um, Tiffany, if you could, if you could uh, zoom in um, to the upper, uh, the, the top, the top. That is cool. That is cool. So that's painted on, or yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Wow. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Painted in detail with acrylic. Amazing pieces. Amazing pieces. Amazing pieces. I'm going to continue on around. So this okay. one here is classical conditioning. This is uh, one of Milan's first pieces. Um, definitely one of her personal favorites. And as you can see, she again used the blue base here. Yep. This is a smaller canvas. It's an 18 by 24. Awesome. 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 And this is one of my personal favorites. This is the, uh, this is called the Venation of Life. Yes. And one of the yes. unique things about this piece here, if you zoom in over here on this left side. So this is actual wallpaper that she used um, oh, okay. to incorporate mm -hmm. into her work. And uh, I believe the story is she went out to uh, New Orleans and was watching some of the street artists uh, do some work out there. And, and they were using some wallpaper in their work and that's what inspired her to try to incorporate that into her work as well. And I think it came out beautiful. So, all right, this is one of the, the ones where, you know, when we talk about this piece, we always get a, a myriad of responses. So I'm again gonna ask you, what do you see when you look at this piece here? This this is this is a little hard. And what, what was your name again, sir? My name is Paul. Paul, yes, Paul. Uh, this is a little difficult. Um, I see multiple things. Um, I first saw a river and some sort of country river. Uh, and then I saw a, uh, I see a wolf in there, you know, believe it or not. Um, I see, I see a, a, a man uh, in there, believe it or not. Um, yeah, I, I see multiple things. I, you know, I can't quite pick, 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 you know, one aspect, but I, you know, in terms of the, the feeling that I get, I, I get a very um, mystic, um, you know, go, like you know, dark and going into, uh, uh, you know, going into the unknown in a sense with, with this piece. Um, but it's an amazing piece. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting perspective you've got there. And, 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 so, and so this is one of the things that unfortunately the pandemic has, uh, has sort of, uh, you know, made things difficult is that inspiration piece, right? You know, she went down to, uh, to New Orleans. You said, you mentioned Paul? Yep. She went down to New Orleans and he had that, that inspiration. Often in life, um, you know, you know, I, I say one of the things I often say to my friends is travel is uh, is one of the, the greatest wealth building opportunities for yourself, for your person, right? Uh, because of the level of, uh, of, 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 of different experiences that you get and, and you know, that and you come back and you recreate it uh, in your community or in, within your uh, industry. And so um, I, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's difficult right now for some artists who uh, rely on you know, traveling to sort of get that inspiration. But nonetheless, oh, they're artists. So uh, of course, you know, creative creativity could come in many different forms. You know, so right. You got to draw the inspiration from somewhere else. Absolutely. So this uh, this piece is another one of the more recent pieces here. The label of this piece is the uh, the new narcissist. Hmm. Interesting. Most people say when they first look at it, they see a bird. <laughs> Before I knew the title, I actually told her it looks kind of like Donald Trump. <laughs> so, so when she told me the, 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 the name of this piece and, you know, not to get into to any, any politics or anything, I just thought it was funny that the name is a new narcissist. Oh, man. That's interesting. No, it's, a, it's an interesting piece, man. It's an interesting piece. Yeah. I didn't see the bird at first. I'll tell you that. See? All right, so we're going to come around to the other side and look at a couple more pieces here. Almost done there, uh, laying down space. So this piece is just uh, delicious cake, <laughs> courtesy of uh, Belon's sister. And then this piece right here, this one is called Bloodline. 
This is a 16 by 20 canvas. So again, relatively uh, smaller canvas in comparison to some of the bigger uh, pieces here. Um, you know, I, I, I noticed uh, when I very first saw this painting, this kind of looks like a, in, in my opinion, it looks like a face and you can kind of see the, the flow of the blood um, flowing in. And you'll notice one difference between this piece and some of the others is there's a lot more white on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, like, I love this piece. I love this piece. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I see the same when I look at this piece. I saw a face and uh, definitely understand the context of this. So, yeah, this is, this is you know, and, and, and what I'm seeing, too, is that on the bottom, it's sort of like fire, you know. Yeah. It might be crazy, but it's sort of like fire coming coming in and, I'm, you know, and then you have the, the trees blowing in the, in the upper left. Uh, very unique piece. Um, I like it. I like it. And uh, folks, feel free to, um, you know, let us know what you feel or what, what you see in the chat. Um, I know Zoe. Yeah, sure. So actually, if we can go back to the bloodline piece. Um, so, you know, I, I brought it up to her when I was looking at all of her artwork that, you know, I noticed that there's more white here. There's actually a little bit more structure here than in some of the other paintings um, where you can kind of see how things flow and connect where, Mm -hmm. uh, as she progressed, um, she kind of became a little bit more abstract with her with her approach. But mm -hmm. you know, the title of this piece is Bloodline, and she talks about you know what originally inspired her to really delve into art. And um, you know, obviously, this is one of her early pieces because you know what inspired her was her bloodline and her connection with uh, her very close relatives that that had passed. Amazing! Amazing! Amazing. And this last piece here. Piece of death. You say that again? I said, what other pieces um, do you have now? Sure. So this is the, the final piece we're going to look at here. This one's called Pensive Moment. Um, 16 by 20. And again, another one of the, uh, well, yeah, this is one of the earlier pieces, but this one came a little bit after the, the more recent one we just looked at. So to me, what I see is it's almost like a uh, fog part of the painting. Right. It, it just it is. there's something going on, right? Um, and then at the top, it's more, I guess, subtle, but shaped. And when I see this piece, I kind of just go into the mind frame of, it looks like this person has a, a lot of their mind. There's some kind of internal conflict uh, that they're dealing with. Uh, you know, there's a connection between art and mental health. Blanc could actually go in a lot more detail about you know what inspired her and, and you know what it means. But when I look at these pieces, I kind of feel that same vibe where mm -hmm. it represents something, whether it's some kind of uh, you know internal conflict or some kind of growth or even some kind of uh, optimistic outlook. I remember one of the pieces you said that you kind of see like a flow of water and um, right. you know, that's just what I get when I look at these pieces. So, you know, it's just interesting how regardless of who it is that's viewing the artwork, um, there's some kind of connection and it's always beautiful when what the artist intended when they were putting together the, the, the piece of work um, mm -hmm. is felt by the, the the person who's consuming the, the art. Wow. So, so Paul, are you an artist yourself? So Paul, my curator. Paul. Oh. Okay. Okay. I, I could definitely tell, tell he has a lot of talent. I mean, the way he's describing those pieces, you know, are amazing. So, cool. Cool. So I am putting the pearls on there now. Sorry about that. No worries, no worries. So right now in the pearl series, I'm applying the pearls to the piece. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go back and with some I'm gonna do a splash of yellow over the top of it. Okay. So once again, for people that are just rolling in, the pearl series represent emotion and backbone. Pearls represent the backbone. 
So you can think of them as the human experience or actually representative individuals in your life that inflict emotion on you. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So this okay. is a, um, a tedious process. So usually it takes me a little longer to do it because I'm very like particular about it. And I go back over with silver to make it sure it looks like an actual pearl. But for right. this demonstration, right. I'm showing you guys the process that I go through. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you, it looks like that, that piece is going to be very intense. And so, uh, and I know that, uh, you know, we are limited, limited on time. So would you have, would you be able to have this available uh, um, for purchasing down the road? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I will, um, I will send you guys a link for this piece on my, I'll put it on my website and I have a link for this piece and um, specify that it was um, curated during the live session with National Black. Um, Balan, talk to me about talk to me about real quick. I mean, I you know, kind of put you on the I put you on the pressure a little bit. But, uh, do you have a um, creative process uh, before you go into it? I, I sort of put you to go into it, but do you have a maybe you sit back, and reflect, or maybe? Grab, grab a bottle of a glass of Rinsley or something to get you comfortable and, and get your creative juices going. Do you have a, a process like that or are you just kind of just going through it? That's a question people often ask me. And one thing that I did early on, especially in my early paintings, like classical conditioning and uh, broken rules, I started to listen to classical music. So I would listen to Bach. Um, this is weird, but I would listen to the Nutcracker Suite. Um, in all seasons, I love the Nutcracker, but those uh -huh. are the things that get me in the mode of painting. Um, uh -huh. so that's kind of like how I set the tone. Um, I would say in the beginning, I would specify like a theme that I wanted to focus on, like bloodline. When I curated that piece, I said that the theme is family, and I think I had my cousin in town, and he said, I want you to do something that's around our family that's representative of life, love. And I created that piece. And I'm not sure um, when Paul was talking about the piece that he told you that the very first thing that I put on that piece were the red lines. I'm not sure. Can I see blood? Mm -hmm. So it was the red lines were the very first thing that um, I added to this piece. And then I started to curate it. And actually, even though you can see the head up right here, I did so, this piece upside down. I actually did this piece, painted it, it upside down, and I flipped it like this. So it, it so it is a head. It is a head. <laughs> so this is really what you know. When you think about life. There are discourses. There's chaos and things in the world that are connected to us in, at the core. And then here is um, the dichotomy between chaos and order in the background. So these are the things that we deal with and that are connected to us that kind of make up our psyche and our experience. And that's what bloodline represents, the human experience and our connectivity to our family. And at the end, of all families. So that's why you see the greenery in the background. And, and this kind of represents the roots of who we are. And how long, how long did that piece take you to do? From start to finish? <laughs> This piece, and once again, I set the tone for my pieces. I usually don't finish them in one piece. Um, here my own colors too, so I, I never just take color acrylic paint out and paint with it. I create my own colors for, for the Belong collection. So this piece okay. probably took me maybe a week. Okay, okay. Okay. And what was your longest piece? You know, mm -hmm. how, 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 how. Mm -hmm. It was prominent in the wild. And it was one of the larger pieces um, that uh. Paul shared with you. Prominence in the wild. So I'm going to show you. How long did that take you? 
Um, that one took me some a few months, and I'll tell you why. Don't think no. How, how did it take a few months to do it? I actually worked on other paintings while that painting was not finished. Okay. Okay. Um, because when, when I looked at it and I saw the color palette, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next, and I didn't want to rush into something that I didn't feel was right. So it mm -hmm. had to be like colors had to match together, um, and then ultimately I carried this piece. And I see you guys talking about it and trying to figure out what's going on there. This piece represents uh, stillness and resilience. So okay. this here is sort of like a monster-like figure. I don't know if you can kind of see it, like sort of like a snake going through the canvas. And you can see this box here with the head tilted down. This here is a body, okay, with gold pigment, which represents resilience and strength. And the head is upright. And what it is telling you is that when you challenge things head on and use a, um, a spirit of fearlessness, you can go through anything. The reason why I did the base of light blue is to kind of emit some of the emotions of calmness, prominence in the wild. Even though there is these discourses and this chaos around us, there's still an air of resilience and calmness that can occur within you. Okay. So this one took some time, but it's I, I love it. So, so is there is can, is there a, a connection between amount of time and, and and value of the art? Absolutely, I would say this piece um, is usually the size of the canvas and the technique that I that I put the value on. But time is also mm -hmm. a factor. But the biggest factor mm -hmm. for me is size of canvas and the techniques that I use. So you can see a little bit more texture. I'm not sure if you can see from there, but in this canvas, there's a lot of texture going on here. Okay. okay. There, okay. there are gold pigments. So the different pigments that you use, so think about the markets too. Things that are scarce and the, the products that you use in it is going to determine, you know, the value, how valuable the piece is. So in this piece, there are gold pigments. Um, there's some silver, and then there's a lot of texture and molding mm. in this piece as well. So it's not just acrylic paint. Ah, so so that so the materials used also is a big factor in evaluation. Absolutely, the materials and techniques. Because remember, you asked me something. You said, "Belong, can you replicate that pearl series again right. and again for people?" Right, right, How right. difficult will it be to replicate this piece if there's a lot of techniques and pigments that go into it? So I think that's a factor too. How scarce is your mm. art? Mm. And what about you know the regions uh, in terms of let's say you, you selling your artwork, right? Uh, is there particular regions that are more in, in the world that are more open to um, to, to art and and and, and just increases the sales price or is it just there's, there's no there's no uh, um I, I, nothing that affects that that uh that the, the world of art in that regard i think it that's a very good question i think um in italy there's a mm -hmm. lot of abstract art going through Italy and Spain. You know, Picasso, a lot of his pieces originated in Spain and some in Paris. Of course. Uh, so it, it's not about if more, if different regions put value on art, it's the type of art they put value on, I think is, is the right. biggest thing. And I think abstract art in, in Italy and in, in some areas of Spain is a, is a huge thing as well as cubism. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Amazing, amazing. Well, um, you educated us quite a bit today. Uh, I feel very confident uh, in <laughs> my understanding of the art world and the art industry. Um, and as we move towards getting ready to close out, I mean, I could, we could keep going on and on and on. 
Uh, but uh, I wanted the folks to, at this point, have opportunity to ask uh, Bilan some questions, uh, if, if you have them. Uh, you know, again, reiterate um, three things that you could do in order to get into the art world as an entrepreneur, uh, then have some final statements, and then continue the networking. So, right. uh, any questions? Any questions? Ask me anything. <laughs> Lon, I got a question. Yes. Do you remember? You've been, you know, doing this for a while. Do you remember your first art piece that you sold? And do you remember that feeling that, hey, I created this, and and actually somebody, you know, was was, was passionate about it and, and bought it from? You. Did you remember that feeling? Do you remember that piece? Can you talk to us about that? I do remember that piece. Um, it was something that I curated um, early on, mm -hmm. um, a part of my marquee pieces in my collection. It may have been my fourth piece. And one of my good friends purchased that piece. And it gave me confidence that maybe I am good. Maybe I can do this. And I kind of blazed through. So even having, even if it's not a gallery acquiring your first piece, just having that someone that's close to you acquiring your piece, loving it, having it up in their office, um, really gave me that confidence to keep going because as an artist, you're going to have doubts. You're going to say, I'm taking all this time. I'm curating these pieces. I love doing it, but am I draining myself? Is this the path? Am I, is this the path I'm, I really want to go down? You know, are these the things that I want to do in life? You know, just be confident and patient mm -hmm. because if you love your work and you're uh, marketing it and socializing it, people are going to purchase your work and they're going to love it just as much as you do. So my first piece um, was one of my close friends purchased it. Um, and then soon, soon after that, I curated um, some pieces for my pastor um, here in North Carolina. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. 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 Um, and so uh, folks, again, the floor is open uh, for some questions. If you have any questions, uh, I have another one for you, Milan. Yes. Um, we are among, amidst a global pandemic. What have you seen, if anything, um, artists doing to sort of, you know, go bring their art to the to the to, to the new world order in, in, in a sense? You know, they, they can't. Per se, participate. I guess you, you could participate in auction houses. They're virtual, probably right now, right? Um, right. But that experience of, of being there, meeting the artist face to face, uh, that has a value, right? What do you what are, what do you see out there in, in the industry that artists are doing to kind of make sure that that value of their art can continue rising, even though they're not able to you know physically be at, at somewhere or physically have an auction or um, physically people you know to for folks to see their artwork, um, touch it, feel it. What are, what are folks are doing? What creative things are you, you seeing out there? Well, how is this pandemic affecting the world? And I know you know it affects everybody, but you know the art world it's it's hard to believe because of the the, the the aspect of the virtual sense. So collaboration is the thing. Well, one of the key things that I've seen people do, especially in New York, these mm -hmm. large art institutions are coming together. And they're creating things like virtual events or art in a box. So they know people that are subscribed to their art and their website. They're actually sending out invitations and virtual boxes for people to be a part of that experience. Because people in New York, you know, right now during this season is excited about art events and galas and, and everything um, that's creative right now is important. So mm -hmm. the thing of collaboration, I think, is key. Another thing um, that I will mention is that I, I think I mentioned that last February, I had mm -hmm. an art event at Bloomberg to talk about art yes. and mental health yes. and art therapy. And mm -hmm. one of the photographers that we had at the event reached out to me and said, Balan, right now, I know with COVID, we're probably not going to have another event, but I want to capture artist experiences while they're curating pieces during COVID to kind of see how the evolution of art has changed. So I have seen that where photographers are collaborating with artists 
to kind of capture those moments during the COVID pandemic. Wow, wow. Who would have thought in a million years, um, this is this <laughs> this would affect us. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, I, I am excited about uh, art now. Um, I've always been, but you know, now I feel that I, I'm in a better place of understanding. Uh, and, and, and again, thank you so much, Milan. Thank you so much. No, uh, thank and you. And you're going to hear more about the Balan collection. I'll definitely send you guys updates on events that's happening and things that I'm, you know, putting out and curating. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I don't see any questions in the chat. So uh, at this time, Balan, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to give the mic to you and uh, so, you know, do some last statements to uh, close the night out and get to get ready to, to do our networking. Right. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining this session. This has been uh, for me. And once again, art is an experience. It's your experience. So anything that you go through throughout life, take that, put it on the canvas, show your emotion and share it with the world because you never know when someone else is experiencing the same thing you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And that's what my art is about. It's about bringing people together allowing people to have that emotional experience with the things that I've dealt with in the past. So once again, thank you for having this experience with me and you'll look more, you'll look for more from the Balan collection in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everybody give Balan a, a round of applause. A round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and also George, I want to tell people that they're able to purchase the work on the website yep. as well. Awesome, awesome. And um, of course, we're going to talk to you about having that availability on our website as well, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know continue, so to continue this collaboration. Um, we are, again, are very thankful for um, have, having you uh, be participate on this. Um, we are um, very looking forward to future collaborations and um, future events um, uh, similar to this uh, as you're as you evolve in your career and, and as an artist, um, don't forget about us when you uh, are, are in a big time, right? So, <laughs> I'm not forget about you guys. <laughs> so, uh, no, thank you so much, Milan. Um And so, you know, at this time, I guess we're going to keep the room open for a little bit. Um, okay. And I'm going to put the music on. Uh, Balan, thank you so much. Uh, again, my thank name you. is... My name is George Santias with the Metro New York National Black MBA VP of Administration. I want to thank you for uh, participating in our Business of Art series today. Uh, we look forward to um, finishing up the uh, EAS week uh, strong. Um, so feel free to uh, you know text in the chat. Um, let 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 me know what you're thinking. Uh, feel free to you know uh, ask me lots of questions, last minute questions if you have. I'm sure we get her back on. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, this, been, this has been a very informative discussion. I uh, hope you walk away very confident about uh, an investment in the art industry, uh, very confident about you as an artist, um, you know, making sure you continue to push yourself, making sure you continue uh, to stay strong amongst this uh, pandemic, and leveraging art as a um, way to um, deal with uh, some, some mental health issues, uh, what have you. So, uh, we at the National Black MBA, um, thank you again for your time and uh, you have a good evening. Uh, at this time, I'm going to open the floor up for uh, some networking. Thank you. Thank you.